good day, Dr. Nelly Kangwa. Here we are again. We're going to continue with part four. Is it part four, part three, part five, whatever? <laughs> but it's a part. <laughs> it's a, you know, it, it's a build up. And today I want to bring in a third case study. We dealt with the first case study where Joshua left some people. When you read from Joshua chapter 11, verse 22, he was told to destroy all the inhabitants, but he left some in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod. And the Bible says in Numbers 33, verse 55, that whoever you leave and dealt with shall be a prick to your eyes, shall mess up with your eyes, and shall be thorns to your side. And Joshua did not complete the assignment. And so all these things began to arise and began to deal with the lives of the people that remained, the people that you know could not actually arise. So I would love to build on that. Okay, I would love to build on that just to follow through because I dealt with Gaza, which arose in Samson's life and the things that happened in this particular time. I want to move on now to deal with Gath. What happened with Gath, which Joshua left and dealt with? That is what I'm going to be dealing with right now. And so let's turn our Bibles to the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 17 so I can show you what took place. The Bible reads from verse number four. Okay, this is a time where David has been anointed. Remember in chapter 16, uh, Samuel was sent by the Lord to go and anoint David. David did not even know what was going on with him. I believe he just used to experience some things when he was in the wilderness, when he was taking care of his father's sheep. He was just wondering what was happening because at one point he actually defended the sheep of the father, killed the bear, killed the lion, and it was just amazing strength that was upon his life. And without him knowing that God has actually called him to come and deliver his people, things are happening in the background, God is orchestrating things. Don't you know that whatever is happening in your life, God is orchestrating things, the universe is gathering people that are supposed to gather to you so that you can be uplifted. You need to know in your life that God has sent some Samuels in your life to position you, to help you fulfill your dream. So when this happened, when he received the anointing from Samuel as the Lord had ordered, something begins to show up in the infancy of his anointing. Do you need to understand many times when your time comes, when God has elevated you, the enemy always releases a particular spirit to silence what has happened. I call it the Herodias spirit. It watches anointing or it watches grace in its infancy and it actually plans to destroy when the thing is still young. This is a spirit that you found even in Jesus' life. The moment Herod heard that Jesus has been born, he began to orchestrate his death. He began to plan so that he can kill this particular purpose. You need to know that many times when you've just been lifted, when God wants to just do something in your life, when you've just noticed that there's something about your life, there are going to be so many temptations that you're going to face. But let me tell you something, you've got to know exactly what you want in life. And so after chapter 16, when David has been anointed, watch this, the curtain is rolled, chapter 17 shows up. And this chapter 17 has got two things. Okay, one of the things is to either lift David or to bring him down. You need to know whatever is happening in your life, it is either you're either going to be lifted or you're going to be brought down. The choice is yours. So I want to introduce to you what um, um, Joshua left and dealt with in um, the book of Joshua chapter number 11, verse 22, the place called Gath. So you find it in 1 Samuel chapter number 17, verse 4. The Bible reads, And the champion went out from the camp of the Philistines, hey, named Goliath. From where? From Gath. Whose height 
was six cubits and a span. He had bronze helmet on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze and he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels and a shield bearer went before him. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, why have, I, why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel and these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. My God, watch what is happening. Joshua, whatever you do not deal with, it shall be a snare to your eyes. It shall prick your eyes. And I want you to watch what is happening. The moment Goliath showed up and the description that you see here, you can already see what is happening in the camp of the Israelites. The camp of the Israelites, when they saw this giant, when this giant stood and you know, charged towards them and spoke the words that he spoke. They were filled with fear and fear entered through what they saw. Let me tell you, child of God, what are you seeing? Whatever it is that has been left in God, whatever it is that your forefathers did not deal with, whatever it is that was not dealt with previously has a reason in your life and is bringing fear to you. This is why you are failing to excel in your business. This is why you are failing in your marriage. This is why you are failing in a lot of things because you are looking at certain things and you are defeated already even before anything starts because when God arises it introduces fear and the bible says they the, the children of israel they withdrew and they went into the valley they camped themselves in the valley and they could not reproduce how many of you know that the moment you leave your homes and you gather in one place you cannot start making children Whatever you, you do not deal with Joshua, whatever you do not completely destroy, it shall be a prick to your side. And how many of you know that? That talks about non-productivity. Many of you, because you are dealing with a spirit of fear, you, you, you are failing to overcome certain things. You are failing to pursue your education. You are failing to pursue your dream because you are telling yourself, I don't have money. I'm scared to register for this course. I'm scared to go and do this business. I don't have money. You are scared. Your vision is being distorted because when the spirit of God arises, my friend, you begin to retreat and you fail to reproduce yourself. You fail to be productive. This is what is happening. And time must come in your life where you need to deal with the spirit of God because if you do not destroy the spirit of God, it will always show up in your life. And when it shows up in your life, it will clean up your destiny. It will clean up your clan. It will clean up your tribe. Someone ought to arise. And my Bible here tells me from verse number 12, Now, now, David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah. I mean, this introduction, I just want you to look at the introduction where David is coming from, the introduction of his bloodline, the introduction of where he's coming from, child of God, from the very moment you gave your life to Jesus, when you received him as your Lord and Savior. You are not that, that person who comes from a particular tribe where they are witches. You are not that particular person who comes from that particular village where they've got shrines and covens. You come from the tribe of Jesus, a tribe called Christian, and Jesus has been your anchor. So your introduction must be totally different. When you begin to arise to contain the enemy of your life, when you begin to arise to actually harass the things that have caused your family to retreat, your family to be in poverty, your family to cry every year because of premature death, your family to be barren, 
time, your family not to undertake the things that they are supposed to undertake. You need to arise changing the tribe because this time you are connected to the almighty Jesus and therefore there's been blood exchange. You have now received his bloodline. You have now received his blood. And because you've received his blood, my friend, you are able to arise and you are able to confront any situation because you are a totally different person. When David is arising at this particular time, you ought to know chapter 16 of his life is working in his bones. Something happened to him in chapter 16. So the man is not scared of anything. There is anointing over his line. There is grace of God over his line. You are anointed. You have the grace of God. You are the appointed one in your family. You've got to silence God. You are the one whom God has called to silence the spirit of God that Joshua did not deal with. The fact that your forefathers did not deal with some things, you are not going to keep blaming. This is why the gospel of us simply talking about how defeated we are because of what our fathers did, how defeated we are because you are an orphan, oh, you are defeated because you did not finish school because of one, two, three things. I think that gospel, I don't subscribe to it. I subscribe to the gospel where you point yourself out because you are that one person whom God has ordained, whom God has anointed to come and settle the scores in your family, whom God has anointed to come and change the narrative in your family. You are supposed to be such a person. You are the one I'm talking to because God has called you and has anointed you. This is why you've known him as your personal Lord and Savior. And because you know him as your personal Lord and Savior, you are supposed to experience all the full benefits of the cross and you are supposed to put in put on the full armor of God and go to war to finish up the enemy to go and destroy the altars of your forefathers this is what is going on with David's life and so even when he is arising with the introduction let me tell you something from the introduction you know that this guy is not joking okay this guy is not joking and he says and the man was old this man, the, the, the Jesse, when he's introducing himself, he says, whose name was Jesse? So he's coming, still he's identified himself with the father Jesse. But then he says, the man, the father is even old. And the man was old, advanced in, 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 in years, in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons of Jesse had gone to follow Saul for battle. So the other people had already gone. Your family could have already gone to do certain things. Some of the things have already been done, but yet... God is looking out for you to go and change the narratives. And the Bible says the names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn. Next to him, Abinadab, and the third was Shammah. David was the youngest. When it comes to grace, when it comes to the things God wants to do in your life, it has nothing to do with your age. It's got something to do with passion, the passion that you have. I remember my mentor one time told me to say, Nelly, do you have, how deep is your bucket and how long is your rope for you to tap, for you to go deep into my grace and you, for you to draw out the grace, for you to draw out that, that, that which I've, I've the Lord has given me. Let me tell you, many people, the reason why you are failing to do the things, you are failing to become the authentic you and fulfill the mandate that is over your life, your rope is too short. Your rope is too short and your bucket is too full. You are too full with religion. You are too full with information that you've been taught. You are too full with anger and offense and, and forgiveness. You need to empty your bucket. Because let me tell you, when an assignment comes over your life, you've got to be empty to be filled with new grace, with new anointing, because the battles that you're going to face, they aren't just small battles. They are battles that have to save everybody. Remember that when killing the bear, when killing the lion, he was just alone. This time there are people who are waiting there are people who are looking your family is looking at you you are the one you are the one empty your bucket from some of the things that you know that have caused you to fear lengthen your rope you know develop passion be passionate to do the things that you're supposed to do be passionate increase in energy you know, just get angry to wait at, at where you are at. You cannot continue doing the things that you are doing. And the Bible says, and um, 
Okay, so it says here in verse number uh, uh, 14 that David was young and the three orders, uh, orders followed Saul. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Occasionally. <laughs> and the Philistine drew near, presented himself 40 days, morning and, and evening. Then Jesse said to his son, David, take now for your brothers and effort. Let me tell you, there is always a time, there is always a moment when you are crossing the day of your breakthrough. Question is, are you able to identify the season? Are you able to identify the time? Some of you are listening to me right now. What you don't know is that as you are listening to what I'm saying, it is the time you are meeting with destiny. I am your destiny helper just to help you begin to take your career, begin to take your purpose, begin to take your business to another level. So a moment shows up. Question is, are you going to seize the moment? Are you going to maximize the season? And so you are sent to take the bread, to take the grain to the brothers. And the instructions from the, the father goes and carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousands and see how your brothers are doing. Hey, hey. Now Saul and they, all the men of Israel were in the valley. Remember they retreated. They could not continue being where they were supposed to be because Goliath, just looking at him, distorted their eyes and stopped the bearing of children. There was no produ productivity. Anything that you live and dealt with messes up with your vision, messes up with the side. Watch this, verse 20. So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to the to fight and shouting for battle. For Israel and the Philistine had drawn up in the battle array against the army. Now watch this. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. Now I want you to see this. When something has been done, it is up to you to pursue. It's up to you to go towards. It's up to you to move. It's up to you to advance. I think many of us Christians, we are like that man who was staying by the pool 38 years blaming everybody we are too much into blame shifting we are too much into pointing fingers we do not take responsibility david here had to leave things that he was doing because there was now an opportunity for him to show up there was now an opportunity for him to be promoted there was now an opportunity for people to see what is made of always time shows up question is how ready are you have you prepared yourself are you seizing the moment are you advancing are you advancing these are the questions you are supposed to ask yourself and so david advanced david advanced then as he talked with them there was the champion, okay, came face to face, the Philistine of God. Hey, when God shows up and you are ready, my friend, you are the one who will deal with the God of your family. Okay, so uh, Goliath showed up, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same word. So David heard them. Hmm. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. <clears throat> so the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it can be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches. And, and, and things begin to go there. There's just something that I want to mention here. And then I move to the other thing. The Bible here says um, in verse 28, Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger, watch this, was aroused against David. And he said, Why did you come down here? Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? This is very, very, uh, you know, very insulting question. I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. Well, I didn't come this time to just see. I came to participate. 
Time has come, child of God, when you are not a person who's just begging, when you are not a person who does not contribute in meetings, when you are just a person in a family where they do not regard you. Time has come when they've got to respect you because you are the sector carrier. You are the one who has the anointing to bring an end to their calamity. So your posture must change. How you do things must change. And so they thought he simply came to see. Now watch his answer. This is what I would love each of you to actually adopt. I would love you to get this into your spirit right now. The Bible says in verse 29, and David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? This is something you ought to get into, child of God. Is there not a cause in your family? Is there not a cause in your family? Is there not a cause in your life? Why are you sitting like that? Why are you oversleeping like that? Why have you accepted wrong things to happen? Is there not a cause? This is something I would love to actually deposit on your spirit. For you to actually arise. For you to have passion. To fight and align your family. Somebody ought to discover something. Somebody ought to go down to God. And go and destroy the spirit. That has a reason to torment your family members. That has a reason to torment your sisters. Your sisters are suffering in marriages. Because you haven't a reason. Your brothers are suffering in their jobs. In their marriages. In their businesses because probably you are the one who is holding the scepter in your hands but you are failing because you've got too many reasons is there no cause let me tell you the moment you begin to build up in your spirit and you begin to respond the way David was responding is there no cause and he began to testify I'm a paraphrasing now you know what when the bears came I I David I went and ripped it when the lion came, I, David, did this. So what testimonies do you have? What have you overcome? You are failing to overcome small things. You are failing to overcome, even to take care of your own self. You are failing to manage your life. You are failing to discipline your life. How are you going to help your family? It is high time you began to win secret battles, my friend. If you want God to use you to deal with the issues in your family, it is high time you began to win secret battles. When you are just alone, when there's nobody, and temptation shows up, you've got to arise and win that secret battle because it is the winning of those secret battles that will cause you to win in public. It is the winning of those secret battles that will cause you to arise and confront any Goliath. Because let me tell when God is lifting you to become an attendant in the court of heaven, when God wants you to arise and become the one who has to bring other people and help other people, you've got to understand your restraint. You've got to understand that there are battles you have won. There are things that you've defeated in secret. That is the only way you will survive what the enemy is doing in your family. There are so many things that have happened there are so many things that have taken place in your life and when those things have taken place they've defeated your life and as a result you are failing to confront the enemy of your life because you've been in compromise and because you've been in compromise you are actually failing to deal with that Goliath God is waiting for you to sort out you need to bring down the Goliath of your family, the Goliath of your community, the Goliath that have a reason to actually confront and you know, demote your family. You need to arise. The economies of this nation, the economies of your family, you are the one who have to deliver them. Goliath must fall down. The spirit of God must fall down. But let me tell you, there is a price to pay. There is a price to pay. And David kept the price. He had everything within him to stand and say, who are you? And circumcise for this time. Do you have that ability to actually stand and confront the enemy in public? 
You've got to sort out your secret life. You know what I'm talking about, my friend. You understand the things that I'm talking about. There are all those secrets you are doing in secret. There are all those things that are causing you to be compromised. When you stand before the Lord and lift your hands, your hands are polluted because of things you've been touching, things that you've been watching. Your vision is distorted because your eyes are watching pornography. Your eyes, when they begin to watch things on TV, wrong movies, wrong things that are polluting your eyes, wrong things that are polluting your ears. When you listen to particular music, the Illuminati and all those things, they've messed up your life in secret. You're doing things that you wouldn't want people to know. Now, that is why Gath, who always confront your family, Gath will continuously confront your children because you are failing to arise and set the stage to say enough is enough. God is calling on you. Let me conclude with another city called Ashdod. How was Ashdod dealt with? Ashdod that Joshua left and dealt with. How was this city? How did it arise to confront the children of God? We see all this, like I told you in Joshua chapter 11, 20. 